Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. And we're going to do this one tonight on the Silver Kangaroo from Perth Mint. It's a, kind of a historic thing because the Perth Mint has decided to try to enter into the bullion coin program as a competitor to uh, the U.S. Silver Eagle, the Philharmonic, and the Canadian Maple Leaf. So... We'll dig into that in a bit here. First, I wanted to point out this chart of the WTI crude contract and the gold overlaid. So we're on the weekly chart here. Now, this activity that we have in crude, um, it seems to be rounding down even here, maybe looking for more lows. The first thing I want you to notice about this uh, price area here is we've actually spent more time at these lows. We're talking January of this year uh, to, you know, we're talking about nine months here. We did not spend that much time at the lows before we got some serious intervention by governments uh, to fix the financial crisis. Now, the other thing I want you to note on this chart is how we changed places with crude oil and gold. You can see that with the run-up to the financial crisis, we got a, a price of nearly $150 on crude oil, whereas gold had just gotten through that $850 record high. And if you remember, $850 was that price that gold hit all the way back in 1979. A lot of people were predicting that it, it would not get through that price. It actually broke through that price, and then the financial crisis happened. You can see Crude oil led everything down. Gold started to follow, and we got this kind of bottom in gold first, uh, and then crude bottomed. Gold started up and it didn't turn around. Now, uh, we're looking at an opposite type of scenario now, where we're not in a financial crisis yet, but uh, gold is higher than crude. So you can see they've changed places. Now, what does this portend? What does this mean? I don't know. My best guess is that the next crisis is actually, this chart seems to indicate to me that it's going to be some type of hyperinflationary blowout. And I think we'll see both of these charts do this at the same time, just like they did it on the downside last time. I think they're going to do it on the upside this time. That's just a guess. Don't quote me on that. So we're going to look at the kangaroo, but before we do that, I want to look at Donald Trump. Now, this is important because I've talked a bit about Trump. It's He's the hottest thing out there. But I want you to see what's going on with the odds sites. And this is something that I pay more attention to than polls, more attention than anything else. The pundits, polls and pundits don't mean a lot to me. But these financial odds mean a lot to me because these are people who are betting with their own money. And now with the cryptocurrencies being out there, foreign markets being out there, there's really no way to prevent people from betting on elections. If you remember the last election with Obama, uh, the, the pundits and the polls were wrong, but the gamblers were right. So let's look and see what they're saying about Trump. Don't bank on Donald Trump becoming the 45th president of the United States. That's the message from gamblers placing bets on the 2016 race for the White House. Trump is beating his rivals by double digits in national polls. Now think about that, double digits in national polls, but... Betters remain skeptical. The billionaire's lead will last until the Republican convention in Cleveland. Now, if you go to the member site there and look at the poll that we put up, you, you can see that uh, uh, there's a quick lead taken by those who say that Trump is going to lose. In fact, now if you add up the poll numbers on our member site, 75% are saying that Trump is going to lose. And that's a big reversal. So it kind of matches this. Trump is beating his rivals by double digits in national polls, but betters remain skeptical of the billionaire's lead will last until the Republican convention in Cleveland. Jeb Bush is actually the odds-on favorite to win the GOP nomination, according to Irish gambling website Paddy Power. 
uh, Vegas casinos are prohibited from offering bets on U.S. political elections. The former governor of Florida has a 13 to 8 odds to be the Republican standard bearer. That is significantly better than Trump, who has 7 to 2 odds. And that is significantly better. This is a 1.5 to 1. This is 3.5 to 1. That's a big difference in odds. That means that a $100 bet would pay $163 if Bush wins and $350 if Trump wins. You may be wondering, what do a bunch of bookies know about Iowa caucuses? Maybe not much, but just like in sports gambling, the odds reflect wagers being made by real gamblers. That suggests people are putting their money on the line to bet on someone they believe will win the nomination. It's a striking contrast with the polls, which show the real estate mogul with a big lead. The latest CNN poll released Thursday shows Trump at 32% support for the Republican nomination, ahead of Ben Carson, his nearest rival, by 13 percentage points. No other candidate, not even Bush, registers even double-digit support. So think about that. That is a huge discrepancy. Now... How do you account for that discrepancy? Well, for me, it's really very simple. The elections are rigged, and the gamblers know the elections are rigged, and they're betting on Bush. I'm afraid I'm going to have to side with the gamblers and with the members. I think that there's going to be a blow up either before the Republican nomination or Trump gets the nomination but then uh, loses. Either way, um, it looks like Trump is going to lose. So let's get to this silver kangaroo, and uh, we're going to start with the YouTube video. Great YouTube video. Don't know where he got the coins, but it's an unboxing by Still Keeping One. And we're going to watch this, and then we're going to go through the categories I picked out for how I'm going to try to rate this coin on whether it's something to buy uh, something to stack. So let's watch the video first here. Hey YouTube, still keeping one here. And I have what at the time of filming I believe is to be the first video with the brand new 2016 Perth Mint Silver Kangaroos. Got a few tubes here, as you can see. Uh, they come in clear tubes of 25, sealed when they come from the... Now you can see here, this guy has like maybe leather or not sure what they are, gloves, but I use uh, cloth gloves, but he's a pretty serious collector here. And you do that to keep from getting oil marks on the coins. But when we see the coins here, and this is gonna be one of the big issues with this kangaroo, is uh, the condition of the coin. Mint like that from Perth Mint. See the swans there. And I'm actually opening these for the first time so let's see how they look. Is that the So here they go. This is in their bullion program. So let me just go ahead and okay. So here it is. Has the radio lines on there. There it is. 2016 dated. Um, they are. You see the P mint mark there right there um, this is a coin that they're coming out with to I'm guessing to compete with the major bullion programs like the Silver Eagles, the Maple Leafs, Libertads here is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and it's got a different design for the Queen there so let me know what you guys think about these um, I haven't seen them for sale anywhere as of yet but there they are 
Now I'm going to wait for a good shot here because I want to show you the scuff marks that happen in these tubes. 2016 Perth Mint. Let's see if we can get some good shots here. Okay, you see that? You see these little chips and scuffs? You see those there, there, and there? This is what you get when you have a coin that's in a roll jangling. Same thing here, you see these rough spots here, the light shows them. All right, well, tell me what you guys think. So that's the coin. Very good unboxing. Really grateful to Still Keeping for doing that one. Now let's read the article from the Perth Mint about this coin. Um, Perth Mint unveils the Australian kangaroo silver bullion coin. Offering a new security detail, the coin includes an authentication feature in the form of a micro laser engraved letter A, which can be found within the first A of Australia. It's only detectable under a magnifying glass and is designed to make it significantly more difficult for the coin to be counterfeited. The newest offering in the nation's suite of investment coins will enable the Perth Mint to compete in the mainstream bullion coin industry in the world's largest markets, said Perth Mint Acting General Manager Mark, General Manager Marketing Neil Vance. Quote, we are confident that the silver kangaroo will help us double our market share in the United States, Europe, and globally as it is issued with an unlimited mintage and is only available for purchase in large quantities. To complement the launch, the Perth Mint also released the 2016 designs of Australia's annual bullion coin program, maintaining its wildlife theme. The series showcase, showcases the nation's iconic fauna in their natural environment. Also, the monkey is the ninth animal in the ancient Chinese lunar calendar. The renowned Australian kangaroo and Australian lunar, 99.99% uh, pure. That's not correct. The kangaroo is, is, nine, is four nines. Uh, I don't know why they said lunar, but the kangaroo is three nines, uh, four nines, and uh, these others, the koala, the kookaburra, and the lunar are three nines. So four nines and three nines. Um, so let's take a look at that. I want to um, take a look at some categories that I've chosen. I'm going to try to rate this coin by. The big issue for stackers, and certainly stackers on this site, is going to be how much money do we, we want to allocate towards this coin, or do we want to allocate any money towards this coin? Now, I chose these four categories, security, and the reason I did that, of course, is because of that mark, just to do a comparison. Security, design, price, and uh, potential gain and then I'm going to give a, a rating a total rating so the first thing we want to look at is the security we had a reference to that uh, in the article but let's go to JM bullion uh, actually no it's the Texas uh, precious metals one where we can see a magnification here you see on the a you see where the marker is you see that a right there within the A. Now, I'm just going to tell you up front, I don't really see how that is going to be that different. Unless there's something I can't see here, I really don't see how that increases security. So for me, that's going to be pretty much a wash. Uh, the security is going to be the inability of the counterfeiters to counterfeit the design. Uh, now this is a pretty complicated design. You can see it's got these squigglies that go along this this border. It's got these spikes here. Uh, that's probably not that hard. It's got these rough lines coming in. It's also got these um, kind of uh, patterns on the kangaroo. So it, it has a pretty good um, design as far as security goes. 
for me, the A doesn't really add that much to it. Um, for me, it's going to be equal to the other coins in security for Perth. And uh, the, that's generally pretty high for me. So I'm going to go ahead and give the coin a 7 on security. Now, back to design. Um, that's purely an aesthetic determination. And of course, when you make an aesthetic determination, then uh, you're just based on personal opinion. And that's going to have to be my personal opinion. I'm not that impressed with this coin. Now, let me show you why. Uh, this is the coin at JM Bullion. And if we scroll down here, you can see we've got another coin here. This is the Kangaroo Proof coin, a 2015 Kangaroo Proof coin. Wow, look at that coin. Boy, I wish they would have used this design instead of the other design. So for that reason, I'm going to have to really knock this one down on design. It's not doing it for me. I'm going to have to give it a five. Now, on the price side of things, this JM Bullion price, we're kind of up in the air here. JM Bullion is saying here that they're going to be selling this coin for $15.96. Now, if you go over to the Texas Precious Metal site and Atmex is out, they don't quote your price. Um, I didn't go through eBay, so we're just going to wait and see how this shakes out. We're talking about $17.97. That's kind of close to the Eagles, so I'm going to have to kind of guess on this thing. If it comes anywhere near this price, then that is an incredible boon on that coin uh, to have uh, this first issue come in at that price. So based on the... JM bullion price, I'm going to give it an eight. Now, if the price is not what it is, but it's higher than the Eagles and the Maples, I'm going to bring that down. But for now, I'm going to give it an eight. So the last one, and of course, for me, the absolutely most important one is going to be gain how much gain and and the short-term gain of course is going to be determined by the semi numismatic value of the coin short-term gain in other words a year or two or three before the silver price inevitably rises now we expect silver to inevitably rise and I've addressed the issue of compression um, at some point when silver goes to some price you will see percentage compression in premiums. There's no way that you're going to have uh, $500 silver and uh, numismatic coin selling for 1000 I don't think you're going to see that. You're going to see premiums compress at some point. But I've discussed the issue before, and the reason why you want to see premiums in the short term is because it gives you strong hands. It gives you the ability to keep stacking in the face of paper manipulation, strong paper manipulation. So there are going to be three factors here that I'm going to talk about when I'm talking about the gain. And that's going to be in regards to the semi-numismatic issue. Now, the first issue for me is going to be the fact that these coins, unlike the other Perth coins, do not come in individual plastic containers. I already showed you on the video there that when you have coins in these rolls you have this scuff issue and uh, we don't know what the scuff issue is on the plastic ones but I've examined many of them very closely and we don't see the types of scuffs that we see on this coin. Now the other problem with this is that the coin is four nines. Now we've seen before with the Canadian issue four nine coins that uh, we know that uh, the, the purer it is because these metals are soft. So the purer the 
coin is, the more potential there is for it to be damaged. So the four nines is a negative on this. And uh, so they come in these rolls. Uh, they have a potential to be scuffed. They have four nines. And then the big, big one, of course, is going to be uh, the fact that it is unlimited issue. So that's one we have to watch very closely. That's going to harm the numismatic value. Now that's only going to be harmful to the extent that uh, it's not available in mass quantities. And that's uh, one of those things that's hard to calculate as well because if it becomes extremely popular later, even though it was popular at issue, then the extreme popularity later can overcome the uh, popularity at the beginning and it can become rare if enough people want it. It's just a matter of how many people want it. Now, the other big factor, of course, with that is going to be the fact that it's the first year. And the first year traditionally is very an, a very important year for collectors. And we've seen in the past with successful coins that the Perth Mint has done in the past, that some of the first years became the rarest years. So that's gonna be a little plus, but for me, the other negatives on that gain issue are gonna be really bad. So I'm gonna really have to give it around a three or four. I'm gonna give it a three because we gave it a eight on uh, price and that's based on that low $15 price that's going to have to come down most likely so we're talking about 12 and 20 and uh, 23 divided by four so we're really talking about a six or so on this coin total overall rating uh, the question I would have to answer at this point if anyone asked me am I going to buy this coin at this point the answer is no. I'll probably buy a roll of these coins to look at them to see if this assessment is correct. I definitely want to see if we get any kind of spots. That's what we got on the Canadian coins. But it's very difficult for me to buy a coin that is in a jangling um, group of 25 that has scuff marks uh, that I really don't like the design that well. The security is okay, um, and the price will be a big determinant. But then again, if I can see Lunar Series coins, and just to give you an idea here, uh, Lunar, I'll just go through and compare my favorite, which is a Lunar Series on security. I think that's a tie. On design, I like the Lunars better. On price, it's a little bit lower, but we're probably only talking about a dollar. But then on the gain side, I'd have to give the Lunars a nine. So for me, the Lunars are gonna be about an eight and these are gonna be about a six at this point. That means I'm gonna be spending my money on the Lunars. Uh, this could change if any of these factors change. Let me know in the comments what you think. That's my analysis. Uh, obviously, at some point when silver explodes to the moon, all this will probably be irrelevant. But the big issue is can you continue stacking and make it to that point? And we'll talk to you next time.